God bless you. It's always a joy to have you here, a joy to come into your homes. We are believing for God's very best in your life. And if you're ever in our area, I hope you'll stop by and be a part of one of our services. I promise you, we'll make you feel right at home. But thanks so much for tuning in today. And thanks again for coming out. I like to start with something funny each week. And I heard about this scientist that said to God, we've decided that we no longer need you. We can clone people. We can transplant hearts and do all kinds of things once considered miraculous. And God said, fine, but to see that you really don't meet, need me, let's have a man-making contest. The only rule is you have to make a man out of dirt. The scientist agreed and he reached down quickly to get a handful of dirt. God said, not so fast, go get your own dirt. <laughs> all right, hold up your Bible, say it like you mean it. This is my Bible, I am what it says I am, I have what it says I have, I can do what it says I can do. Today I will be taught the Word of God. I boldly confess, my mind is alert, my heart is receptive, I will never be the same. In Jesus' name, God bless you. I want to talk to you today about learning to encourage yourself. One of the battles that we all have to fight is the battle with discouragement. Our dreams don't always happen on our timetables. We go through disappointments, adversities, and it's easy to lose our enthusiasm, to lose our zeal for life. And it's good to have family and friends that encourage us. It's good to have a coach, a teacher, a pastor to cheer us on. But one thing I've learned is other people cannot keep us encouraged. Other people can't keep us cheered up. They may give us a boost. They may help us from time to time. But if you're really going to live in victory, that encouragement has to come from the inside. You've got to learn to encourage yourself. When times get tough and things aren't going your way, and you don't feel like pursuing your dreams, your mind is telling you it's not worth it. It's never going to get any better. You might as well just settle where you are. Deep down in your spirit, there has to be a resolve, a strength on the inside that says, I refuse to settle where I am. I know God has a great plan for my life and I'm going to keep pressing forward and become everything that he's created me to be. This is what David had to do. He had just suffered a major setback. It's one of the most difficult times of his life. His city had been destroyed. His family was kidnapped. And now his own men had turned against him. Looked like an impossible situation. He could have easily just given up and faded off into the sunset, defeated and depressed. But the scripture says here, David encouraged himself in the Lord his God. David understood this principle. He wasn't depending on his family, his friends, his colleagues. He knew how to draw strength and encouragement from within. And sometimes when you need it the most, the people you're counting on to cheer you up, unfortunately, they won't be there for you. That friend that normally calls is out of town. Your spouse is having a tough month. Your coworkers, your parents, they're preoccupied with their own challenges. But when you learn to dig down deep and encourage yourself, there's a real freedom. And this is one of the secrets to David's success. He knew how to draw encouragement and strength from the inside. How did he do it? He began to replay the victories that God had given him in the past. He remembered how God chose him from the other brothers when he was a shepherd boy. He remembered how he killed the lion and the bear with his bare hands. He remembered how God helped him to defeat Goliath and how God protected him when King Saul was trying to kill him. And as he rehearsed over and over the goodness and faithfulness of God, strength began to fill his heart. He got a new vision of victory. He began to thank God for what he had done and thank God that he could turn the situation around. And he went from being depressed and defeated to rising up with that warrior mentality. And when you're in difficult times and you're tempted to get down, maybe you got a bad medical report or you're struggling in a relationship, struggling in your finances, instead of dwelling on the negative and replaying over and over all the reasons why it won't work out and how impossible it is, no, you need to change the channel. 
Get the remote control. That's not the only channel. Start replaying like David all the times that God has helped you. The times God protected you from those accidents. The times God gave you a promotion even though you weren't the most qualified. The times that door closed. You were disappointed then, but looking back now, you know it would have been a big mistake. Or how about the times you lost that loved one? You should have been defeated. You didn't think you could make it through, but you felt a peace and a strength like you've never felt before. Every one of us has seen the hand of God at work in our lives. And a key to encouraging ourselves is to replay those victories. As you remember the great things God has done, faith will fill your heart. Strength and courage will come from the inside. No matter what you're facing, no matter how difficult it looks, you'll know deep down, God did not bring me this far to leave me here. If he did it for me in the past, he'll do it again for me in the future. Some of you today, you'd get your joy back if you just changed the channel. You're always remembering the negative, remembering what didn't work out and who hurt you and how unfair it was. No wonder you're down, you're watching the wrong channel. God has done something great for every one of us. Maybe God's given you a child. The day that little baby was born, you were so excited. Why don't you replay that miracle in your mind? Maybe God's given you a house. He's given you a promotion. Or maybe you got a good medical report. You were so thrilled. You were on cloud nine. Learn to replay those victories in your mind. If you're going to keep yourself encouraged, you've got to make sure you're watching the right channel. And I found you cannot stay down and defeated as long as you're thinking about the goodness of God. I know every time I see our new facility here at Lakewood, whether I'm driving by on the freeway or pulling up to a service, I always say without fail, thank you, Lord, for our beautiful new building. I'm still amazed at what God has done. And whenever I see it, I don't even have to think about it anymore. It just comes out of me naturally. I guess I've developed the habit. I've probably said that phrase 10,000 times. Every time I do, you know what's happening? I'm encouraging myself. My faith is increasing. I can feel strength on the inside. I know if God gave us this building, he can do anything. It's funny, our son Jonathan, he's 13 now. The other day, he and my friend Johnny were coming back from the airport. Victoria and I, we had gone on to another city and on the route home, we passed our new facility. And as they were driving by, Jonathan said to Johnny, let me say it for my dad. Thank you, Lord, for our beautiful new building. (laughs) He's heard me say it so much. Now he's saying it. The scripture says we should tell our children and our grandchildren the great things God has done. But I see too many people today They've just settled where they are. When we give in to the spirit of discouragement, it steals our dreams. Their attitude is, it's not worth it. My marriage is not worth fighting for. It's never going to work out. Or I'm tired of dealing with this child. It's not worth the struggle. I'm tired of doing what's right, Joel. I'm never going to get ahead. No, don't believe those lies. That is the spirit of discouragement trying to steal your dreams and keep you right where you are. Let me tell you something that you already know deep down in your spirit. Every promise that God's put in your heart, every dream that he's planted on the inside is well worth the fight. Your child is worth it. Your marriage is worth it. Your health is worth it. Your dreams are worth it. Don't you dare settle where you are. You may have suffered a setback. Like David, you've been through a disappointment. Maybe a relationship didn't work out. Maybe you're facing a major health issue right now. But remember this, every setback is a setup for a comeback. You may have gotten knocked down, but you didn't get knocked out. You got to get back up, dust yourself off. God has you in the palm of his hand. He said, if you'd stay in faith, he would not only bring you out, but he'd bring you out better off than you were before. This is what David had to do. He was down, but he didn't stay down. He started replaying his victories. He started thanking God for what he had done in the past. And as he changed the channel and got into that attitude of faith and expectancy, that's when he went from being a victim to being a victor. He said to his men, get up guys, 
we're going to go attack the enemy. The scripture says they not only recovered everything that had been stolen, but they came out with more than they had before. That's what God wants to do for every one of us. But it all started when David encouraged himself. He recognized the main battle wasn't taking place on the outside. It was taking place on the inside. When all the odds were against him, his family wasn't there. His friends had turned on him. The news wasn't good. The economy was low. Gas was high. His attitude was, I'm not worried about any of that. I know the God I serve is well able to deliver me. He said, in effect, I've seen God lift me out of the pit before. He set my feet on a rock, put a new song in my heart. And if he did it for me back then, I know he'll do it for me right now. That's the kind of attitude that gets God's attention. And I know every one of us can look back in life and say with David, if it had not been for the goodness of God, where would I be? 